Hey gang, <clears throat> welcome back to the big board. I wanted to check in here with you. We're still doing turn 10. So this, uh, hopefully this will be a brief video, but here's a thing that I've noticed, and this is in, hey, and it's uh, EFS, Barbarossa, AGC module, campaign game, sorry. I've got a little, I'm a little focused on this particular topic here that I want to get to. And that is uh, a mini combat systems inside a war game and in particular something that's trying to represent history that anything that has a multi-attack capability uh, meaning that <clears throat> you may attack multiple times in a given turn there are i think certain tactics that work nearly every time to either thwart the the game mechanic or potentially produce a, a, a predictable result for the defender and uh, an ahistorical implementation of tactics. This, I think is what I'm trying to say. And I want to draw your attention to the map uh, here, right? So we're, we're going to zoom in over here a little bit. Uh, this is just to the west of Mogilev. This is Mogilev here. And we've got... <clears throat> You know, the a weight of forces here, there's one, two, three, four, four and a half German uh, mechanized divisions of some sort or another. Mostly, uh, mostly panzers. Right? Zoom in a little bit. I'm on my old phone here, by the way, so the, the resolution is probably not as awesome. But... One of the things you can do as a defender is you sort of line the roads where, where the terrain is kind of heavy and you can see we've got marsh and woods and wooded marsh and stuff like that. <clears throat> and by lining the roads, it forces this unit, which can do multiple attacks at a turn, it can move up and do an overrun. But in this case, of course, it's not going to be able to do an overrun because it's not going to be able to get the requisite minimum odds to make it a viable overrun. So we're going to have to do a stand-up attack. And <clears throat> in the second mechanized phase for these guys, uh, or for the in the mechanized phase for these guys, if they were here, they would then maybe try and do an overrun there, or they would bring another stack through and try and overrun there, and that would allow them to potentially knock out that hex but it's four factors so i would need 32 combat factors in a stack you can't really get 32 combat factors the highest combat factor is an eight or a seven and uh, while four eights are 32 i would need four of those units if i had four of those units that would be overstacked. if i used infantry infantry can only stack too high see this guy where is he here He's got six steps, so I can only have one of him and a couple of other units. So I'm not going to be ever going to get enough factors here to do an overrun. So that means that it's one turn, two turns, three turns at, well, best or worst, depending on your viewpoint, to get through here. And... I don't know how you rationalize that from a military tactics strategy standpoint. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense to me or if it perhaps is just cool and that's, in parentheses, that's the way it was, right? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know that folks lined both sides of the road and just you know slugged it out day after day that way. I would have thought you would have prepared, you know, well, you know, I guess you would call it defense in depth is something you could call that. <laughs> uh, it's interesting because the same sort of thing happens in a lot of the SBI games where, you know, you just put these little battalions on the road and they get a disruption and they take a step loss and then they die. And so it takes three attacks to knock them out or, or two really good results to knock them out and make them retreat. And so you can line in some of the modern games, I'm thinking of the Central Front system in particular, you know, BAOR and Fifth Corps and stuff like that. If you know where the primary thrust is, 
you can slow down the enemy so significantly that they either trick themselves out or fatigue themselves, or in this case, uh, are reluctant to uh, have take the higher risk attacks because you know we're we're pushing the boundaries of, of the supply line anyway, and that just adds more risk to taking losses on units that are highly valuable. So you are going to have to slow down and deploy. And it's a nifty tactic that works for the Soviets. It's one of the few tricks that I've found for them that really helps them slow down the enemy uh, very much. And and we're doing a similar thing down, uh, where are we? Just right down here at the bottom of the screen. Right here. You know, you push some garbage out front. You put one unit adjacent if you know that there's enough factors in there that they could potentially overrun, overrun. So you want to force them to, you know, chew up movement points, take risks making die rolls, and then have them advance the next turn into your, you know, strong points, which, you know, of course, here I, I, they'll finish, they'll be prepared this turn, they'll be ready at the end of this turn. But nevertheless, a, uh, a challenging situation uh, for, for the Germans and, uh, and a nifty little pseudo gamey technique for the Soviets to try and use uh, crappy terrain and uh, to their advantage and, and line avenues of advance to, to slow things down. Yeah. So I thought I'd chip in there and share that with you not bore you to death with it, but just a little observation. Catch you later.